What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2011 Volvo XC60. Today on the XC60, we're going to be covering how to replace your PCV oil trap. This is going to be applicable to all models equipped with the SI6 six-cylinder motor. Typically, we recommend you replace these every 100,000 miles. The vehicle behind us is nearing 210,000 miles. It has been done once before, so it is coming up on a second um, replacement. This is a genuine Volvo unit in front of me, which is available on fcpuro.com. We have also gone ahead and added an Oedeker clamp to this kit in front of us. This is a 21 millimeter clamp. So if you do not feel like installing these, maybe you don't have the pliers for it, you can replace it with a warm clamp that is of the similar size. One thing to know about the genuine Volvo piece is oftentimes, while they do say made in Sweden, they are a genuine item. Uh, this motor was shared on a bunch of different platforms. So oftentimes you will see FOMO Co stamped on here, maybe Land Rover. Don't be surprised to see that. It's still gonna be a genuine part. We're gonna be reusing all the hardware, so no need to replace the hardware. A couple of things to know as these units start to age, sometimes they'll get a little bit noisy in the beginning stages. You may hear a little bit of a whistle coming from the engine bay. You do not want to let these go full bad, otherwise your engine's going to build up too much uh, positive crank pressure and you're going to blow out all the seals in your motor, causing you to basically total out your engine. So 100,000 miles is a good service interval. Something you can help to extend the life of these is simply staying on top of your oil changes. Here at FCPO, we recommend every 5,000 miles on any vehicle, especially if you're running the liquid molly oil. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this DIY. For this DIY, you're gonna need a small flathead screwdriver. We have CTA 4029. These are gonna be the pliers needed for that fancy style clamp. We have a quarter inch drive ratchet with a small two inch extension. We have an eight millimeter socket, a T30, and just as insurance, a magnet tool. It's a little bit tight on the backside of that oil trap, so that will come in just as insurance. Now we know what tools we're gonna to be using. Let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, we are under the hood of the XC60. First things first is we're gonna work on removing our beauty cover. This is simply held on by a couple of rubber grommets. So you're gonna pull up on it, just like so. Take it off, set it to the side. With that off, now we have our PCV oil trap exposed. You can see there's a couple things attached to it. First things first, if you haven't been under here in a while, or maybe it's your first time looking under here, I recommend you either take some parts cleaner or some compressed air and just blow out the area around this so that when you remove this oil trap, nothing falls into the engine, no debris or loose leaves or anything like that. We've already gone ahead and blown this off with air prior to filming, so we're good to go. So as you can see, starting over on the driver's side bank, we have next to the diaphragm, this is also one of the things that usually fails in here, is an electrical connector and this rubber elbow hose. We're gonna go ahead and undo this Oedeker style clamp using our flathead screwdriver. So let's do that first. We're gonna take our flathead screwdriver and just work on opening up this clamp so we can remove it from our intake elbow here. This one looks like it was extra tightened down at some point in its life. Probably the last time this was done. All right, at this point we have done it, undone it enough that this elbow is just gonna come off. Right behind it, we have an electrical connector that we want to undo. It has one small tab up top, pretty standard. You're just gonna press it down to release the connector and then pull it off of the oil trap, just like that. Swing it over to the front and just kind of tuck it away. Over on the passenger side bank, we have a couple solenoids and vacuum lines uh, hanging out here. They're just holding on to a tab coming off of the oil trap. All we have to do is simply lift it up as one and then that can hang off to the side. And then this wiring harness up here is close, but it's not gonna be really in the way of anything. We have two eight millimeter bolts up top that we're gonna to wanna to remove first. So let's get those going. We got two eight mil up top here that we'll remove first. Again, I'm just using an eight mil socket on my quarter inch drive ratchet. It's nice and small. These are gonna come out with the oil trap. As you can see, if you pull them all the way up, you kind of just bought them out on the firewall there for the cowl. So those will stay in there. Now from there, we have a total of 12 
T30s to remove all around the oil trap. We'll start with the easy ones up front and then we'll work on the few in the back. It's starting over by the intake tube, which we will remove once we get to the back bolts. We have the T30 between the trap and the elbow on the trap here. And we're just gonna work our way around so we get to the harder reach ones on the back. If you're working on a XC70 or maybe an S60 or a XC90 of some sort, this might be a little bit easier to get to. On the XC60, it's not bad though. As you can see, these are pretty loose. They don't get torqued down too much, so they shouldn't be too tight when you pull yours out. For this back uh, passenger corner one, I'm losing the extension. And then once it's broken loose, we can just get it by hand. And with that, we have four left on the back side here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove this intake pipe first so it's out of our way and we can just bang out the next four. We have one hose clamp here. We're gonna go ahead and undo that. Then we'll separate this from our air box. And then this should give us the play that we need to access those pesky small T30s in the back. Using the new unit here to compare, this is how this sits in the engine bay right now. So we have one, two, three, and four left to remove so that we can pull it out. All right, so we're gonna reach back here for the dip in the trap, and then we're gonna feed our T30 down there with the extension. You're not really gonna be able to see where it's going, but you can definitely feel uh, once it's on the bolt. And then last but not least, we have this other one in the corner here. For this last corner one, we're gonna lose the extension, similar to the one on the passenger side. All right. Now we have all the hardware off. We should be able to pop this off. Sometimes they're stuck by the gasket. Let's rock it a little bit. Be mindful, you still have two eight millimeter bolts up top. There you go. This can come out now if you'd like. And we're just kind of pulling towards the passenger side of it. That way we don't clip the sensor on the end. Here's our old one and our new one. As you can see, they look exactly the same. This one obviously has a hundred thousand miles of use on it. You can still see the nice clean blue diaphragm inside on the new one. Our old one is discolored, kind of matches the cruddiness of everything else. Before you install the new one, it's a good idea to inspect the surface of the block wipe down the area, get any residual off the ceiling surface if you need to. I'm just gonna use some shop towel and kind of work around real quick and get ready to install our new oil trap. All right, at this point we have our surface cleaned up a bit. We're ready to install our new oil trap. So similar to how we moved it, we're gonna kind of slide it over underneath that sensor. There is one dowel on here <clears throat> that kind of helps locate it on the block, but it really only goes on one way. Gasket already pre-installed, of course. We're gonna go ahead and get this over like this. All right, everything looks good there. We're just gonna start all our hardware by hand. And then for those of you flying along at home that wanna use a torque wrench, the torque spec for everything is gonna be 10 Newton meters. Don't forget to start with your two eight millimeter bolts while you have some play on the oil trap here. Once you get those started by hand, you know it's gonna be kind of much lined up the rest of the way. These back ones can be a little bit tricky. You just kind of want to feel by hand, get them started. All right, now we have all of them started by hand. We can go ahead and just snug them up in a crisscross pattern. 
Again, the 12 T30s and the two eight millimeter bolts get torqued down to 10 Newton meters. With all of them secured, we can go ahead and reattach our intake elbow over to the air box. We'll just go ahead and get our flathead screwdriver. We'll get our hose clamp lined up, feed that back onto the air box. And we'll just go ahead and snug that up using a flathead screwdriver. Now we have the hose clamp secured on there. We can work our way over to the passenger side of the oil trap, just working backwards here and we can reattach this solenoid to the end of our PCB valve. Again, it's just held in in place there. And then finalizing over by the diaphragm on the driver's side, we had our electrical connector, which we had tucked away. You can just go ahead and plug that one back in. It's a little bit hard to see, but you cannot miss it. And it goes in one way with the release tab towards the top. We have our new clamp on the little elbow hose there, ready to rock and roll. We'll feed that onto the air tube first. Then we'll line up our clamp where we want it. And then we'll take our pliers and just cinch it down. There we go. And last but not least, now that that's all secure, everything looks good. We're gonna go ahead and install our beauty cover once more. And we'll tuck the back portion under the cowl there, line up the oil fill, press it down. And with that, my good people, that is gonna conclude this DIY for today. Overall, a really straightforward process on these inline sixes. Definitely something that is just a good DIY to know, to follow every 100,000 miles. And if you're hearing that whistling come from your engine bay, more than likely your PCV trap has gone bad. So if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, or there's a specific job you wanna see us do on this chassis, leave it in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.